Reverend Insanity Chapter 161 Willingly Exploited Fang Yuan put down his cup, sitting down. Only then did everyone dare to sit down. Among them, not all the classmates were present. For example, Mo Bei, Kai Cheng, and the others with strong backgrounds were not among the ones present. It's about time I have to go. This was a well-organized meetup. Fang Yuan showed his inclination to leave. Gu Yu Ding Zong upon hearing the praise was overjoyed and quickly stood up, taking out a money bag from his pocket. The bag was filled with primeval stones. He smiled and bowed, Upon hearing Lord's wisdom today, I've felt a strong sense of enlightenment, reaping a great reward. This is a small gift, but I hope Lord can accept my token of gratitude. He talked a bunch of crap, and from the start of the banquet, he had been flattering Fang Yuan non-stop, so how could he have gotten any enlightenment? But everyone else acted as if this indeed really happened, shouting loudly and urging Fang Yuan to accept his gratitude. Fang Yuan did not reject, smiling lightly and naturally taking over this money bag. Next was the second and the third simultaneously coming up to offer their gifts, all primeval stones. All right, all right. Fang Yuan smiled as he accepted them all. Tens of bags filled with primeval stones, how could Fang Yuan carry them all? Gu Yu Ding Zong on seeing this, quickly summoned a few family servants to carry his load for him. In this short amount of time, Fang Yuan gained almost 10,000 primeval stones. Lastly, Fang Yuan slowly stood up, raising his cup once again. Our encounter is by fate. This classmate relationship, both you and I remember it at heart. This is truly worth drinking over. Yes, well said, Lord Fang Yuan. Such perfect phrasing, taking the words right out of our hearts, this is talent no doubt. Everyone stood up, praising as they raised their cups. They either had no background or their background was not strong enough. Fang Yuan advanced to Clan Elder and they were afraid of his revenge, but at the same time they also wanted to enter Fang Yuan's social network. Fang Yuan smiled lightly, raising his hand and toasting with his wine cup. At this point, the dark clouds dissipated, showing the lustrous moonlight enveloping the garden outside. The cool air was mixed with the smell of blood, and reality was extremely cruel. But in this hall, it was exquisite with beautiful lights and decorations, overflowing with wine and fortune, and everyone smiled superficially as if they were in heaven on earth. This is the allure of the system. Fang Yuan's eyes glinted. As he stared at the wine in his cup, his mind thought about it. Back then, when he extorted his classmates, it was only several primeval stones, but he incurred public outcry. However, right now, he didn't even have to say a word. Yet these people were all willing, fighting to be the first to give him primeval stones, each bag having over a hundred primeval stones. This differential treatment on the surface, it looked like the result of Fang Yuan's elder status. In reality, the truth was because he had previously been outside the system. Right now, however, he had entered the organization's higher management. Under the system, the members are all exploited willingly. Even without any hints from Fang Yuan, they would come forth and bribe him. Some would use their network to get into his faction, while women use their charms to get closer. It works this way in this world, and the same goes on Earth as well. This world's people are hilarious, being robbed and extorted only for a meager loss, and they resist violently, screaming injustice. But bribing the higher-ups, sending gifts, bodies and virginities, they do it willingly. And they are even afraid that it's not enough. Being able to get so many primeval stones today, this is all borrowing the power of the system. Fang Yuan laughed coldly in his heart, thinking of Gu Yu King Shu, Mo Yan and Kai Shan. Talented people like Gu Yu King Shu having B-grade talent, they had much greater cultivating talent than Fang Yuan. But all of them cultivated slowly, staying at rank 2 realm for a long time. Did they not work hard enough? Hee <laughs> hee. Let's laugh a little. This is the deprivation and pressure from the system. Such deprivation and pressure, it is invisible. Ordinary people cannot even feel it. Taking Fang Yuan's situation, for example. 
The primeval stones these people gifted, if used on themselves, would definitely be a driving force towards their own cultivation. Thus, bribery is a form of deprivation. Numerous lower rankers fight to bribe the higher-ups. This was a form of gathering resources and fortifying the authority of the higher-ups. Other than monetary fortune, there is also the deprivation of time. Elites like Gu Yu King Shu did not need to bribe others, but their time was used up. Telling you to do this and that on a daily basis, running errands, doing missions, but acting rightfully so this is for the higher-ups' attention and favor. If this time was used to cultivate, Gu Yu King Shu would have broken through rank 2 peak stage and reached rank 3. Then using the wood charm Gu, he might have even been able to kill Bai Ning Bing. The amazing part was that the clan elders did not want this junior Gu Yu King Shu to advance to rank 3 so quickly. For such a useful pawn piece, if he really became rank 3 and was on the same status as them, how can they make use of him? Who is willing to have their authority shaved? Thus, they consciously dragged and suppressed him, even using the reason of I think well of this lad, but he needs to train. Only by refining can he become a true jade. Hee <laughs> hee. This is the truth of the system. If one cannot see beyond this, regardless of how heroic they are or how talented one is, they are merely tigers and dragons chained up, only being slaves. People like Gu Yu King Shu and Kai Zhang, no matter how intelligent or talented they are, so what? Although he had so many thoughts, his thoughts flashed in an instant, and only a second passed in real life. Everyone, please drink up. Fang Yuan moved the cup to his lips, downing the drink in one mouthful. Everyone quickly toasted him, not daring to leave behind a single drop. Goodbye. Fang Yuan cupped his fists, taking his leave. The family servants held the primeval stones as they followed behind him. Everyone quickly sent him off. Please continue drinking, you don't have to send me off, Fang Yuan said, but everyone did not do so. Instead, they left their seats and continued their flattery. Fang Yuan continued, I like peace and quiet. Seeing his expression, everyone finally got his intentions and remained in the hall. Seeing Fang Yuan's figure leaving, some people sighed, while others remained silent, and someone exclaimed, Elder Fang Yuan truly is a legend, such elegance. They were all frogs in the well, only able to see the moon from below, thinking about Fang Yuan's unrestrained position, but not being able to see beyond the system's restrictions. Actually, as long as one joins the system, they would be weakened, and their benefits would be sacrificed. Even the clan leader has to sacrifice. He needed to manage the clan, and with this he contributed much of time and effort. It is just that the members at the bottom of the chain are deprived more severely. The higher one's status is, the more benefits one will enjoy. Initially, when Fang Yuan extorted primeval stones, he worked against the system, acting alone and not even sparing his own brother. That was to avoid this deprivation. Thus, he had ample time and energy to advance to rank 3 and become a clan elder, causing numerous people to scream in wonder. But now that he had undergone a huge transformation, becoming a clan elder, his temperament became mild and respectful with authority and status, enjoying the benefits of a clan elder, causing many to be filled with envy. This separation and joining, entering and leaving, is filled with deep wisdom and knowledge. But how many people can see clearly across this fact? Fang Yuan was not exploited, but he still enjoyed the benefits. In the eyes of mortals, this is unrestrained and elegance. All right, put the things on the table and you can go, Fang Yuan said. The family servants did not dare to have an opinion, quietly placing down the items and bowing to Fang Yuan before taking their leave. This is no longer the rented apartment Fang Yuan stayed in before. After advancing to Elder, the clan allocated him a brand new bamboo building. There was a study room and a secret room for closed-door cultivation in the bamboo building, but there were no family servants. Fang Yuan needed to find them himself. To see the flower come out. Fang Yuan willed in his heart and with the injection of his white silver primeval essence, the Tusita flower residing on his tongue as a tattoo came alive immediately. He opened his mouth and spit out, 
only to see red light appearing as the Tusita flower rotated gradually like a lantern in mid-air, floating and appearing in front of him. Fang Yuan activated the Tusita flower. Instantly, red light flashed and caused the entire area to be lit in a red hue. When the red light shone upon the pieces of primeval stones, there was a formless attraction and all the stones flew out of their bags and entered the Tusita flower. A moment later, the red light dissipated and Fang Yuan opened his mouth. The Tusita flower entered his mouth once more, landing on his tongue and turning into a red flower lantern tattoo. This Tusita flower is a rank 3 goo, able to store primeval stones and other things. Among the rank 3 storage goo, this is one of the better ones, being able to store a max of 30,000 primeval stones. But considering that I have to store other things as well, the most would probably be around 15,000 primeval stones. Although it was his first time using this goo worm, with his previous life's experience, he could quickly estimate the limit of the goo. Primeval stones are the most basic resource for a goo master's cultivation, undeniably. Without primeval stones, goo masters would lack a driving force severely. And primeval stones also help in quickly restoring primeval essence, so in battle, it has a lot of help. Especially for goo masters who travel alone, primeval stones are the most basic assurance for traveling. Normally, they would need at least 10,000 primeval stones to ensure that a goo master has the basic needs covered for a period of time. And every once in a while, they require replenishment. A saving of 15,000 primeval stones to Fang Yuan was still too little, but also at an acceptable range. First I borrowed 3,000 primeval stones from Kai Lion, and with today's earnings, I do not have to fret over primeval stones for a while. In the six classifications, I have the Blood Moon Goo and Sky Canopy Goo for attack and defense, Thunderwings for movement, Tusita Flower for storage, and Earth Communication Ear Grass for recon. I only lack a healing goo, Fang Yuan calculated. He previously had a nine-leaf vitality grass, but Fang Yuan handed it up already, thus being able to get the Tusita flower. But for this rank two nine-leaf vitality grass, even in Fang Yuan's possession, the healing ability was not satisfactory. Rank three healing goo worms, there are a few desirable ones. Endless vitality goo can sustain healing and expends little primeval essence. On this note, it is the best for goo masters like me with low aptitude. There's also the undying grass, a goo that can save me as long as I have a single breath left. This is the best life preservation type of goo. The most optimum is the self-reliance goo, relying on the goo master's own strength. The larger the goo master's strength, the more it can stimulate the metabolism of the goo master and thus recover injuries faster. But for these three Gu worms, how can Fang Yuan obtain them? In the Gu Yu clan, he even checked the underground cavern, but found no such Gu. On the resource board, they would also not display such a precious Gu. The only hope lies in the flower wine monk's inheritance. But the chances were slim, Fang Yuan barely held any hope. He could feel that the flower wine monk's inheritance was coming to an end. How could there be the exact goo that Fang Yuan needs right at the end? If that was the case, it would be too perfect, too idealistic. But Fang Yuan knew how cruel this world was. Placing your faith in such a thing, that's naivety. But even so, I have to finish exploring this inheritance ground. At least for that chainsaw golden centipede, I have to subdue it, Fang Yuan thought in his heart. Chapter 162 Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus Although he had planned to investigate the flower wine inheritance ground, Fang Yuan couldn't find the time to do so. With his elder status, many were watching him, and with the busy schedule of the wolf tide, many battles had to be fought, and he did not have an opportunity to leave. By the time he returned to the Rock Crack's secret cave, it was over ten days later. The end of summer, nighttime. The rain just stopped, bringing the atmosphere of autumn itself. In the sky, a golden moon was hanging, round like a plate, high up in the sky. Hearing vague wolf cries mixed with the remaining crickets, Fang Yuan stood on a slope, turning back and observing. Guyu village was bright with numerous lamps lighted. 
The torn walls had been fixed over and over, losing the peace and tranquility it once had. It was almost like a huge beast that had undergone numerous battles, lying on the ground gasping for breath. After my rebirth, even the wolf tide's progress has changed much. In my memory, the Thunder Crown Wolf arrived three days ago, but now it is nowhere to be seen. Fang Yuan took a look before moving his sight. Tonight he had managed to squeeze out some time and had to make good use of it. A moment later, he entered the Rock Crack's secret cave again. The cave entrance was purposely covered with gray ash. There had never been any footsteps on it, showing that this place was yet undiscovered. This small kind of detection method could not be called professional, but Fang Yuan's experience placed them to good use. Of course, he did not only have one method of precaution, and after several layers of checking, he finally confirmed that this secret cave was still safe for the time being. He breathed a sigh of relief. After all, since his rebirth, many things had been altered. Especially during the wolf tide, Gu Masters moved around more frequently, so someone might have discovered this place. He entered the tunnel and went into the second secret room. Pushing open the rock door, he entered the rock forest. In the rock forest, the path that he once excavated was filled with jade, eye stone monkeys again. But the Fang Yuan now is already a rank 3 Gu master. Although the Blood Moon Gu did not have the highest attacking power among the rank 3 Gu worms, it was definitely far superior than the Moon Glow Gu. Fang Yuan spent six hours, exterminating almost ten groups of monkeys, reopening a path for himself. He came to the most central area and stepped down the rough rock stairs, entering the third secret room. A rock door blocked his path, and on the rock door there was a carving, Golden Centipede's cave is precarious, earth communication is the way to avoid the disaster. Last time, he had been stuck at this step. But this time, he opened the rock door with no hesitation, striding into the darkness. He held a torch that illuminated the surrounding ten steps. This centipede cave was wide, having a height of three meters and breadth of two meters. There were also many narrow paths that extended all over the place. Wherever Fang Yuan walked, the fire would proceed to light up the place and dispel the darkness. Initially the cave only had the sound of his footsteps, but soon all sorts of noises came from all over the place. The sound gathered into one collective body, continuously sounding. At the edge of the lighted area, he soon saw a large number of centipedes. They were ferocious. It was only due to the bright fire that they did not attack Fang Yuan. But Fang Yuan knew that as time passed, the centipedes would increase in number, and with the back pushing the ones in front, this stalemate would soon be broken. But he did not mind it. If he was still rank 2 with only the white jade goo's defense, he would definitely not cause such a commotion, attracting the movement of the centipede group. But now that he was rank 3, the sky canopy goo's defense was enough for him to withstand the bites of the insects, and his only concern was the insect king of the place chainsaw golden centipede. It had appeared. Fang Yuan purposely used a trace of his white silver primeval essence from his aperture, releasing it into the air, exposing his rank 3 goo master aura. This aura caused the chainsaw golden centipede to feel a strong threat. To it, Fang Yuan had stepped into his territory, and this wild beast needed to be eliminated immediately. Fang Yuan stood on guard against it. This chainsaw golden centipede was around a meter long, its body as wide as two fists. It first landed at the fringe of the lighted area, coiling its body around it, like python ambushing its prey. But in the next moment, it moved slowly with numerous legs sustaining its weight as it gradually got closer towards Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan's rank 3 aura only made it alert and not afraid. If he was rank 4, it would not pressure Fang Yuan like this. If he was rank 5 and only revealed a bit of that aura, it would run for its life. Fang Yuan raised the torch high. As the fire burned, it illuminated the surroundings and the shadow's movements. Under the glow of the fire, the chainsaw golden centipede's exoskeleton emitted an eerie light. At the side of its body, there were silver-colored sawdeeth. As it got closer, the sawdeeth moved as well, looking like a slowed chainsaw, emitting a buzzing sound. 
the other centipedes gathered towards Fang Yuan from the walls and the ground. Some centipedes climbed to the ceiling, then dropped down, landing on Fang Yuan's shoulder and back. Fang Yuan did not mind it. He activated the sky canopy goo, and a thick white crystal light appeared on his body, the form of an armor subtly showing as it covered him fully. The centipede's poisonous limbs could not do anything against this white crystal armor. The twisting and turning centipedes climbed on his face or behind his ears. It was a little disgusting, but Fang Yuan's endurance level was way beyond this, thus ignoring them completely. In his previous life, he had eaten almost anything in the wilderness, and even non-poisonous centipedes were eaten raw. In fact the taste was not that bad, almost a bit strange initially, but he got used to it after eating them for a while. He only placed his attention on the chainsaw golden centipede. The chainsaw golden centipede moved gradually, reducing the distance between Fang Yuan and itself. When there was a distance of three to four steps between them, Fang Yuan stopped the white silver primeval essence from leaking, and this caused his aura to instantly weaken. The chainsaw golden centipede acutely felt that, thus instantly increasing its speed, moving like a golden lime. Pew! In the blink of an eye, it had shortened the distance and coiled around Fang Yuan's stomach. This speed was really fast. It first appeared motionless, then on the very moment it moved, it dashed through like a golden light. When Fang Yuan managed to react, this chainsaw golden centipede had already coiled around his waist like a snake, opening its mouth and attacking towards Fang Yuan's face. Fang Yuan quickly stretched out both arms, grabbing the head of this golden centipede. The chainsaw golden centipede struggled, and Fang Yuan, who had the strength of two boars, felt that his strength was insufficient. Especially when the chainsaw golden centipede's two bladed edges started to move rapidly. Clank, clank, clank. A strong pulling and slashing force grinded at the white light of the sky canopy goo. At once, Fang Yuan's white silver primeval essence was rapidly used up as the white light grinded with the chainsaws, causing sparks to fly. Fang Yuan's primeval essence was only initial stage light silver primeval essence, and with only 42% in storage, it could not support such an expenditure. However, Fang Yuan was unfazed, even though he could not get free from the chainsaw golden centipede, he had a trump card, Spring Autumn Cicada. He willed in his heart, and the Spring Autumn Cicada's shadow appeared from his aperture. The Spring Autumn Cicada was gradually recovering. Its two wings were tender and new like fresh leaves, and at the same time its body had a royal wooden luster. But overall, it still gave off a withered feeling of death. It had recovered around 20%, thus its aura was much stronger. Once this aura was leaked, the chainsaw golden centipede that was struggling intensely immediately surrendered. It was only a rank 3 wild goo worm. Against the aura of the rank 6 spring autumn cicada, it did not dare to move at all. Fang Yuan felt it most evidently. Previously, he was still gripping the chainsaw golden centipede like a poisonous python using all ways to prevent it from biting. The next moment, it had become a soft and harmless rope. Fang Yuan smiled lightly, using his white silver primeval essence onto the chainsaw golden centipede that had basically given up. Fang Yuan's will worked without obstacles, completely eliminating the wild consciousness it had. In a few breaths' time, the chainsaw golden centipede was already refined by Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan let go of both hands, the chainsaw golden centipede's numerous segments moved with rhythm, moving across the white protective armor and around Fang Yuan's waist, finally twisting and coiling around his arm. The surrounding centipede groups went away like a receding tide. The wild chainsaw golden centipede, because of its natural consciousness, was able to dominate the insect group. But now that Fang Yuan's will replaced it, the Chainsaw Golden Centipede lost its ability to communicate and control the group. Fang Yuan did not eliminate these centipedes, instead letting them leave. Maybe in another dozen plus years, a new Chainsaw Golden Centipede might be born. But this no longer had anything to do with Fang Yuan. He let the Chainsaw Golden Centipede hang on his shoulder as he investigated deeper into the cave. 
This centipede tunnel had a lot of paths, and after moving for a while, the main path split into three branches. Fang Yuan first used the earth communication ear grass, and after a while, he eliminated the center path. Choosing the path on the right, he moved for half an hour and found a dead end. He could only backtrack and go through the left path. By keeping the chainsaw golden centipede, he could deter the centipede groups and cause them to move away from wherever he goes with the golden centipede's aura. This greatly aided his search. Not long after he entered the left path, the centipede group that moved away revealed a cave, and he found some clues there. These are signs of human construction. Fang Yuan's heart was moved. Very evidently, this path was dug out by the flower wine monk initially using the thousand lie earth wolf spider. Fang Yuan moved along this path at a slow pace, patiently investigating. There were a lot of centipedes in this path, and this was another piece of good news for Fang Yuan. This is because areas with insect groups living there allowed him to eliminate the possibility of place traps. This tunnel was longer than he expected. Fang Yuan spent over 12 hours and walked over three lie worth of distance. The slope gradually moved down as Fang Yuan approached a deep underground area. Every once in a while, he stopped and used the earth communication ear grass to eliminate any possible threats. Swoosh swish. What sound is this? Fang Yuan eventually heard a weird noise. Immediately, he noticed what it was. This is water, don't tell me. His thought moved quickly as he had an idea. At the end of the tunnel, he saw a crystal wall. And behind the crystal wall was water. In the water, there was an ash-gray colored river that flowed in a spiral like a mini tornado, endlessly swirling in a self-sufficient system. As I thought, this is a natural essence spring. Seeing this, Fang Yuan's attention was piqued. Soon after, he saw that behind this watery crystal wall, there was something else in the spring. A flower bud with the colors of blue and white following one another was leisurely floating in the spring water. This is actually the heavenly essence treasure lotus. Fang Yuan was shocked. Chapter 163, Thunder Crown Wolf. As Fang Yuan looked at the heavenly essence treasure lotus, many doubts in his heart was cleared. He could roughly speculate what had happened. Going back in time a millennium ago, a solitary rank 5 Gu master came upon King Mao Mountain and incidentally found this underground natural spirit spring. He was exalted and settled down here. He began merging the mortal villagers living around the foot of the mountain together, forming the prototype of Gu Yu village. He took in over a hundred wives and concubines, wantonly spreading his bloodline. He was the ancestor of Gu Yu clan, the founder of Gu Yu village. Time passed by, and he passed away ending the first generation, then it was the second, third until it reached the fourth generation. The fourth generation clan leader possessed an agreed aptitude and cultivated to rank five, creating another golden age for the clan. One day, a daimonic path a goo master came to the village. He was bald and muscular, dressed in pink clothes and moved alone. His favorite hobby was to defile innocent women. It was the famous devil of the demonic path, Flower Wine Monk. Who knew what fortuitous encounter this Flower Wine Monk had, to be able to know the recipe to refine heavenly essence treasure lotus. After many preparations, he only lacked a natural spirit spring to refine this flower goo. After looking all around, he finally chose Gu Yu Village Spirit Spring. At first, he used the pretense of buying Moon Orchid to slowly approach the Gu Yu clan's higher-ups and get the details on Gu Yu clan. Afterwards, in the battle with the fourth-generation clan leader, he was able to achieve complete victory with his formidable strength. He had not only killed the fourth generation head, but also downed a large majority of the elders. However, his body was infected by the Munshidogu. Munshidogu's ability was to restrict primeval essence and wasn't enough to be fatal. However, Flower Wine Monk couldn't wantonly slaughter if he wanted to refine the heavenly essence treasure lotus, as that would attract a lot of attention and hinder the progress. Thus, he chose to do things from the dark. He used the Thousand Lie Earthwolf Spider to dig out a tunnel, secretly advancing to this area. 
Due to the thorough preparations he had made before and with the sufficient materials, he was able to refine Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus in the Spirit Spring. The Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus has an extraordinary background. Its fusion recipe had been created many millenniums ago by a goo master of the righteous faction, Immortal Venerable Genesis Lotus. Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus was only a rank 3 flower goo, but it had its advancement route and could become the rank 6 Heavenly Essence Treasure Imperial Lotus, which was ranked 6th among the list of top 10 great immortal goo rankings. Its worth was about the same as the Spring Autumn Cicada. The Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus had a reputation as a portable spirit spring because it could produce primeval stones. However, its fusion process had an extremely high price. To refine the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus, there must be a natural spirit spring. This spring should be full of primeval energy and cannot be a spirit spring that has been used for many years, with its reserves drying out. After the fusion succeeds, this spirit spring will be thoroughly useless and will lose its ability to produce primeval stones, becoming just an ordinary spring. A natural spirit spring is extremely valuable. One only needs to look at how this spirit spring has sustained countless Gu masters of the Gu Yu clan for close to a millennium to realize this point. Refining a heavenly essence treasure lotus would completely destroy this spirit spring. But that was just the beginning. If it was to be advanced to rank 4, it would need 7 spirit springs, 9 at rank 5, and 11 for rank 6. Apart from this, many extremely precious goo worms would be needed as auxiliary ingredients. If I take this heavenly essence treasure lotus, it would be like carrying a mini scale spirit spring with me. The heavenly essence treasure lotus is only a rank 3 goo, so its daily primeval stones production can't compare to a normal spirit spring but the amount will be enough to sustain my cultivation expenditure. This was just one of its benefits. The primeval stones produced by Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus were a lot more than the earnings from the Nine Leaves Vitality Grass. Primeval stones can not only help in advancing cultivation, they are also an exchangeable form of currency. With the Treasure Lotus, Fang Yuan could decrease the amount of primeval stones he carried. The Tusita flower could then be used to store various stuffs which could greatly decrease the burden on him. However, I heard that the fusion process of the treasure lotus is quite mysterious. It appears from nothing during which it transits between the astral and physical form. Ordinary people can't see it, and it can only be seen clearly through the crystal. This goo is quite delicate and needs to be nourished within the spirit spring for nine days and nine nights until it grows out nine intact leaves before it can be plucked and put into the primeval sea in the aperture. If one picks it up before the time is ripe, all their efforts would be completely wasted. Fang Yuan didn't know the detailed recipe of Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus and only knew some insider rumors. He had no idea on how to advance it in the future. Even so, this rank 3 Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus would be of an enormous assistance to him. He looked beyond the crystal wall and carefully observed. To his surprise, the flower only had 8 and a damaged half leaf. There was only half a leaf left for the 9 complete leaves. Fang Yuan wasn't baffled by this. Centuries had passed, the Spirit Springs reserves had been consumed for four generations of time. This heavenly essence treasure lotus condensed the majority of the spirit spring's essence, constantly consuming the primeval stones produced by the spirit spring and causing the spirit spring's reserves to further decrease. As a result, the treasure lotus slowly began to reverse the absorption, instead replenishing the damage to the spirit spring. By doing this, it was damaging itself. This was the reason for the damaged leaf. Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus must have nine complete leaves before it can be plucked. It only has eight leaves and a half now. I need to throw in primeval stones to the spring if I am to pluck it. Primeval stones were the crystallization of the spirit spring, they could provide the nourishment to the treasure lotus and let it grow again. However, don't underestimate this half-damaged leaf. It was sure to require large amounts of primeval stones for it to grow back. If I am not wrong, this crystal wall should be produced by a moat goo. 
Fang Yuan tried to touch the wall and found that this wall was real but also virtual, just like light and shadow. His hands went through the wall without any obstruction. But he quickly took back his hand and didn't dare to go deep into the spirit spring. Spirit springs should never be polluted. He poured his primeval essence into the Tusita flower and took out a primeval stone. He threw the primeval stone through the crystal wall. As if the wall didn't exist, the primeval stone went through it and dropped into the spirit spring, striking onto the phantom figure of the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus. Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus transited between blue and white and started shaking like water ripples. It digested the primeval stone in almost an instant. After waiting for the flower to turn calm, Fang Yuan observed it attentively but found no change in that damaged leaf. His expression was calm. He started throwing in dozens of primeval stones, but there was still no change to the damaged leaf. Fang Yuan continued to throw in primeval stones while silently counting the number. When over 500 primeval stones were thrown, the damaged leaf finally grew by a little. After the sight of this scene, Fang Yuan couldn't help but feel slightly gloomy. From this calculation, he had to throw in at least over 50,000 primeval stones in at one time. If he did it in batches and the time gap was long, Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus would consume itself to replenish the spirit spring as the clan continuously extracted primeval stones. Over 50,000 primeval stones, I only have just over 10,000 with me and lack 40,000 more. With his status as an elder, Raising these 40,000 primeval stones wasn't really a problem. The true problem, however, lay elsewhere. Once he took out this heavenly essence treasure lotus, the spirit spring would be completely useless, and this was bound to attract the whole clan's furious and frantic investigation. Fang Yuan had plentiful experience, but he had limited methods. If the clan investigated without any considerations, they were sure to find some clues. In fact, the clan's higher-ups were already suspicious of him, but their suspicions were temporarily suppressed by the wolf tide. If the flower wine monk's inheritance was exposed, Fang Yuan would definitely be the primary suspect. Even if Fang Yuan secretly escaped, he would suffer the whole clan's reckless chase. I can't give up over the heavenly essence treasure lotus. Even if I don't have its fusion recipe, who knows what the future holds? The problem is that once I take this goo, it is akin to stabbing a hornet's nest and bringing calamity upon myself. Fang Yuan secretly considered every situation and decided he had to wait for the best opportunity to appear to take this heavenly essence treasure lotus. This heavenly essence treasure lotus should be the last inheritance of Flower Wine Monk. But there are many suspicious points to this. Flower Wine Monk would have come to this place to refine the Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus, so what kind of accident did he encounter to be so seriously injured that he had to hurriedly set up this inheritance before dying? Fang Yuan already knew the reason for the Flower Wine Monk to set up the inheritance. It was to take revenge against the Gu Yu clan. If Heavenly Essence Treasure Lotus was to be taken out of the Spirit Spring, whether it was a success or failure, this natural Spirit Spring was bound to be useless. Without the natural Spirit Spring, Gu Yu Clan would have no foundation to stay here. It was only a matter of time before the clan broke apart. Forget it, I won't make any headway in my doubts without any new evidence. I should return to the village now. In the end, Fang Yuan shook his head and began to return back the way he came. When he had just exited the rock crack, a loud and clear wolf howl continuously resounded. This sound, Fang Yuan turned grim and quickly moved. When he reached the riverbank outside of the rock crack, he could smell a thick odor of blood. Sounds of cries, yells, wolf howls and explosions could be heard, even though there was still some distance to the village. Fang Yuan concealed his figure and climbed a hill. It was early in the morning and the first rays of sunlight had just broken out of the sky. Countless wolf packs were rushing towards the Gu Yu village like a flood. Fang Yuan's gaze swept past them, then his body trembled. In the rearmost part of the wolf packs, he saw a lightning wolf that was as large as a small hill. 
Myriad Beast King, Thunder Crown Wolf. It was tall and slim, had strong limbs, and its whole body was covered with eerie blue scales. Tufts of golden wolf fur could be seen on its claws and tail. The fur on its head were all stiff and upraised, forming a towering crown. It was crouching on the ground and was still like a sculpture. The frenzy lightning wolves and bold lightning wolves around it constantly howled, serving to show its elegance and nobility. Just by sitting there, it had already brought a great mental pressure to the Guyu clan. The myriad beast king has finally arrived, it is the decisive moment for the survival of the Guyu village. Fang Yuan gazed towards the village. Innumerable Gu masters were in fierce battles, using all of their strength to block the frantic charge of the wolf tide. Suddenly, around ten figures flew out of the village and rushed against the wolf tide, charging towards the Thunder Crown Wolf. They were all elders, and in front of them was the clan leader Gu Yubo. Chapter 164 Intense Battle if one wants to fight against the Thunder Crown Wolf, one must strike first. Its strength is just too great, and if it was let into the village, it would definitely cause great losses and damage. This group's capabilities were huge. With the rank 4 clan leader Gu Yubo as the leader, and his elders as his support, they were a strong attacking force. The wolf tide was surging violently, yet they went against it with careful and compact cooperation. As if the group was a warship, splitting the waves apart, advancing bravely forward. Wherever they went, they were practically sweeping everything away in their path. The closer they got to the Thunder Crown Wolf, the more the pressure coming from the wolf tide increased. Gu Yu Bo was calm and composed. Suddenly, he stretched out his right palm and slashed in front of him. Swoosh! A golden-colored moonblade, as big as a grown adult, formed in a split second and flew out towards the front. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. After flying out for a few meters, this moon disk suddenly went through a change, and from one blade it turned into three. Three moonblades flew alongside each other, bringing about the sound of the wind whistling as it plowed open three bloody paths like knives cutting meat apart. Many wolves fell without exception. Broken limbs flew into the air, and blood-curdling cries sounded non-stop. A frenzy lightning wolf roared and started rushing over fiercely towards the goo masters from the right side. Let me, a clan elder suddenly went from a thin and dry appearance, turning into a huge fat man in one breath. With a bang, he used his round belly and sent the frenzy lightning wolf flying away. The frenzy lightning wolf had come in a torrential rush, and the greater the strength of collision, the stronger the bounce back was. It was thrown across high into the air, cutting an arc, and then finally falling down hundreds of meters away. The other elders were displaying all sorts of abilities. There were some with long hair like needles, continuously shooting out and sweeping away lightning wolves. Some of them had their bodies covered in light armor, forcefully bearing through the wolves tearing and biting. The Thunder Crown Wolf went from a half-sitting state and slowly got onto its feet. It firmly stared at the Goo Masters rushing towards itself and the wolf's dark eyes flashed with warning. It opened its mouth and let out a low roar, revealing its sharp and jagged wolf fangs. Each of the frenzy lightning wolves and bold lightning wolves that heard its roar immediately got up and rushed towards the Goo Masters. The Goo Masters were instantly slowed in their charge, receiving great obstruction. Clan Leader I'll leave it to all of you, Clan Elders. You have to win. Numerous eyes flashed and gathered on them. Unknown number of rallying cries and shouts sounded from them the depths of the clansmen's hearts. This was the most crucial battle. If they lose the battle, the entire clan would face the danger of being wiped out. If victory was assured, then they would have held against the hardest moment of the wolf tide. This was the battle that would decide the life and death of the Gu Yu clan. None of the elders backed off. They pushed forward while drenched in blood. Even though they did not lose any numbers, none of them were spared from injury. They eliminated all the obstacles around them, until they faced the Thunder Crown Wolf, then charged towards it. Therapy Laiku Suddenly a middle-aged female clan elder stretched out both her hands and a pure white, warm light bubbled forth. 
the light first flowed onto the clan leader's body and then reflected onto each of the other clan elders. This was a rank 3 healing goo with area of effect properties and it could instantly cause the wounds on goo masters to stop bleeding. Light wounds would be recovered completely while heavy wounds would be healed by half. Continue fighting, Gu Yu Bo roared loudly. Five clan elders swiped their arms as they heard the signal and sent a moon blade flying towards the sky. Suddenly, a clan elder roared as all the muscles on his body erupted and expanded three times, becoming a white fur giant ape. It jumped in front of the group, its hands joined together. Guyu Bo stepped onto its two hands, and with a low roar, the ape kicked from the ground and stretched out its waist, using all the strength in its body to toss Guyu Bo into the sky. Moon invite Gu. Guyu Bo spread out his left hand. It was giving out a hazy, whirlpool-like purple moonlight. The moon blades that the clan elders had shot towards the sky were all absorbed and annexed by this purple moonlight. Slash! Guyu Bo's eyes shone as he shouted in a thunderous volume, splitting the air with his palms from up to down. Pew! Winds and thunder resounded as a purple moon blade, larger than a horse carriage, flew towards the thunder crown wolf. This moon blade looked slow, but was actually fast, and in a split second, it struck its target. The thunder crown wolf howled, and at the last moment, a thunder light armor appeared on its body. Bam! In the next moment, an intense explosion occurred as the sky was engulfed in eerie blue lightning pitting against the purple alluring moonlight. Numerous people squinted as the shockwaves spread from the impact, sending the ordinary lightning wolves in the vicinity flying. When the intense light dissipated, the Goo Masters were already engaging in battle with the Thunder Crown Wolf. The clan elders were all extremely experienced and well-coordinated with each other. An aged old master with floating white hair shot out needles from it endlessly like rain. On another side, a female Goo Master blew out flames from her nostrils like lingering snakes, and she spouted a wave of orange flame and assaulted two sides at the same time. There were another three Goo Masters, one turned into a white ape, while another turned his muscles into steel from head to toe as they both tried to curb the Thunder Crown Wolf. The other Goo Master tossed out unending numbers of puppet goo, pouring his primeval essence and turning them into vine-armored grass soldiers or wooden servants with red spears, using them as fodder to attract the incoming assault. Healing Goo Masters stood at the outer circle, using therapy light goo from time to time. Beside them were defensive Goo Masters, giving them care and protection. The Thunder Crown Wolf had been beaten badly. Its right front limb had a huge wound, the blood flowing non-stop. This was the outcome from the attack of the Purple Moonblade a moment ago. It roared continuously as it had fallen into the Goo Masters' well-planned trap. Even if it had the spirits to fight back, there was not much it could do. The Goo Masters weaved and jumped around it like fleas on a cat or dog. They continued to move around and pulled space as they worked with completely chemistry. But the good situation did not last, for the Thunder Crown Wolf slowly began to adapt while the wound on its body did not stop healing. It was clear that it had a healing goo on its body. This was very bad news. The healing goo's existence would mean that this is a war of attrition. Wild goo could just use the natural essence straight from the air, while goo masters could only use primeval essence from their own apertures. After the battle reached 15 minutes later, the thunder crown wolf suddenly howled towards the sky, and a torrent of lightning flashes enveloped its whole body, while its speed sharply increased onefold. The elder who had turned into a white ape could not dodge in time. Unable to react to this change, he was bitten by the thunder crown wolf and his skull was torn into two by the wolf's tugging. The thunder crown wolf had torn a line in the battlefront and with continuous swipes of its tail, purplish-blue electric currents rushed forth, the goo masters could only back away non-stop. In this dangerous moment, the clan leader Gu Yu Bo stood out. He was a rank 4 expert with powerful attacks and superior defense, like the center pillar of the group, using all his strength to salvage the situation. Mountain rocks broke and shadows dissipated as group battles enlarged. 
The aftermath ravaged the battlefield and not a single lightning wolf dared to enter battle. The situation of the battlefield only became more desperate. The Thunder Crown Wolf's injuries became heavier and worse, the bleeding unable to stop, and bones could be seen in the deeper wounds. At the same time, the Goo Masters also suffered heavy losses, so far they had already lost six clan elders. If not for the village's clan elders' immediate and urgent dispatch, coming in to aid the fight, the battle might have long collapsed. Everyone, stand strong, holding is the key to victory. Gu Yubo killed until his eyes were red, and his voice was hoarse as he gave his all to arouse morale. But at this moment, the Thunder Crown Wolf suddenly went berserk, and its body was enshrouded in a layer of bright red light. Rank 4 Berserk Gu The Thunder Crown Wolf's strength, speed, agility, and other attributes suddenly rose to twice the original base. Boom! There was a loud noise as it swiped its right claw, turning a clan elder into complete meat mush. With a flick of its tail, the sound of wind erupted and an electrical net flew out, trapping a field of grass and wooden puppets, then burning it all into charcoal. I can't keep up, my puppets are already used up, the elder cried out, frightened. With the situation rapidly changing for the worse, the terror of the myriad beast king was fully unleashed, leaving everyone in despair. Gu Yu Bo's eyebrows were locked tight, and it seemed like he was about to break his teeth from gritting, when he suddenly yelled, Trap it! Use the iron chain snake! As the clan elders heard this, they were awed in their hearts. Early during the start of the wolf tide, they had already displayed countless of battle tactics. This was a method that must only be used when there was no other choice. Wind snare goo, an elder cried out, and from his nostrils came a green breeze, wrapping around the thunder crown wolf's claws. Swamp goo, another elder roared and crouched down, bringing his two hands down and slamming on the ground. Instantly, the earth below the thunder crown wolf turned into mud. With these simultaneous attacks, the Thunder Crown Wolf's movements were slowed at that moment. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the other elders all stretched out their hands, and from their sleeves and pants, waves of black shadows shot out. The black shadow was about the size of a fist, and each length was around two meters long. On close inspection, one would see that each black shadow was a snake goo. This snake was shaped like an iron chain, its whole body a gloomy black. Coils of metal rings were strung and connected together, and only the snake head looked normal. As it flew out, the snakes wriggled on the ground, quickly climbing onto the thunder crown wolf's body. Their heads and tails then connected and mutually fit together, forming a metal net in the blink of an eye, taking root from the ground and trapping the thunder crown wolf on the spot. But this situation was only temporary, for as the Thunder Crown Wolf struggled continuously, one by one, the iron chains would break off. In just five to six minutes, these metallic snakes would completely disintegrate away, no longer trapping the Thunder Crown Wolf. Kai Guang Suoping, stay here and stop the wolf pack from attacking the metal chains. The rest of you fall back to the village with me, Gu Yubo shouted. He actually had chosen to retreat. However, the other clan elders did not show any surprised expressions, they had already known the clan leader's intention. They hurried back to the village, and immediately a clan elder came up towards them and said, Lord clan leader, everything has been prepared. Gu Yu Bo nodded, commanding the group to go to the clan pavilion. In the plaza before the clan pavilion, there was already up to a hundred Gu masters seated on the ground. These Gu masters were mainly those who were seriously hurt and could not enter battle in a short period of time. Each of their faces carried a calm expression of facing death without fear. Meanwhile, for those who still had the ability to battle, they were fighting away on the front lines. With the battle reaching this moment, the clan had already given its all. In this dire situation, even the mortals had been mobilized. Using each and every single human life to be turned as a meat wall, obstructing the wolf tide for the time being, this gave the Gu masters some time to recuperate and regroup. Gu Yubo and the clan elders went into the ancestral halls of the clan pavilion. Under the memorial tablets of their ancestors, they all sank to their knees on the floor. 
To the great ancestor above me, we descendants are greatly ashamed. The wolf tide is turbulent, and the village has fallen into the situation of life and death. We beseech our great ancestor to come and give us a hand. When Gu Yu Bo finished speaking in a low voice, the ancestral hall fell into deep silence. Drip drop. A few of the clan elders' blood seeped out from their hastily bandaged wounds, dripping onto the floor. Gu Yu Bo and the rest of the clan elders held their breaths, not even daring to pant or breathe loudly. Back in the day, when the first-generation clan leader felt his death approaching, he set out to leave the village. Before his departure, he left a testament behind. It spoke that if the clan would ever fall into the danger of perishing, they could pray before his memorial tablet. At that moment, goo worms would descend from the sky and help the village through the difficult situation. Throughout history, the Gu Yu clan had suffered through major crisis a few times and they had dealt with the calamity this way. This was the Gu Yu clan's last trump card. Chapter 165 Blood Guillotine In the ancestral hall, it was deadly silent. The clan elder and clan leader lowered their heads like a big rock was weighing on their heart. After a Gu master dies, the Gu worms they leave behind will still have the person's will remaining. They cannot be considered wild goo worms and have had lost their ability to use the natural essence in the air. These goo worms can be considered an extension of life of that particular goo master. Everyone's heart was uneasy. The first generation clan head had passed on for at least a thousand years, so were the methods that he had left behind still effective. No one knew. After all, since the last crisis, it had already been two hundred years. Why did they retreat? On the slope, Fang Yuan saw this scene and grew suspicious. In his previous life, his cultivation was too low. Thus, he could not learn about the clan's secrets. But soon his body shook, discovering that a group of flying worms had descended from the sky. This is, Fang Yuan's eyes squinted as cold light shone. There were up to a hundred goo worms flying around in a cluster, forming a red cloud, descending and landing on the village square. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The noises emitted by the insect group entered the ancestral hall, and the clan elders raised their heads, showing a frantically overjoyed expression. Thank you, great ancestor, for the protection. Gu Yu Bo's heart felt at ease as he paid his respects before getting up. Go, go and see, the clan leader sighed. On his face, there was happiness, solemnness, and grief, a complicated expression. Leaving the ancestral hall and standing on the building's stairway, everyone could see that on the village square there was a red tornado rampaging. These goo worms were only around the size of a fingertip. They were shaped like locusts with a scary face and was red all over. They entered the bodies of the goo masters sitting on the square, extracting their blood and primeval essence. In a few breaths' time, one insect multiplied into more worms. Thus, the goo increased greatly in numbers as time went by. There were constantly new goo worms being produced, flying into the goo master's skin and flying out, and then digging in again. In the village square, miserable cries and cold groans sounded, but not one goo master fled. Before they came, they were already informed by the clan elders. For the clan, they willingly tributed their bodies to feed the goo, using their own sacrifices to bring about the survival of the clan. These are all good lads of our clan, Gu Yu Bo seeing this muttered in a low voice, as the hand holding onto the railing shivered slightly. The other elders showed a painful expression, but did not say anything. This situation was exactly as recorded in the clan memorials. The first-generation ancestor had left behind these goo worms, and they required goo masters' lives to feed. Only then are they satisfied and will help the clan to defend against external enemies. After these flying goo were full and satisfied, they flew up again with an even greater presence. In the blink of an eye, they had grown in number over tens of times. What was left on the square were piles of white bones as the goo flew out like a tornado rampaging through the wolf packs outside the village. The blood guillotine indeed, Fang Yuan who was standing on the slope saw everything and thought in his heart. This blood guillotine is a rank 5 goo. Its usability and feeding are fused into one. It was a very strange goo. 
They specialized in consuming a goo master's life-bound origin blood, and after feasting, they would start to multiply, from one to two, two to four. If they were hungry and couldn't find food, they would start to eat each other, reducing the size of their group to sustain the expenditure they needed in moving around. At its peak, the blood guillotine could engulf the skies and lands, destroying villages in their path, and were more fearsome than many rank six goo worms. When it was weak at only one or two in number, they would barely have any power and is worse than a rank three goo. Especially when this blood guillotine goo advances into the highly acclaimed rank six demonic goo blood deity. Among the top ten great demonic goo in the world, it ranks seventh. In his previous life, when Fang Yuan created the Blood Wing Demonic Sect, he first wanted to refine the Blood Deity instead of the Spring Autumn Cicada. However, because of circumstances and many other reasons, he could only reduce his expectations and refine the Spring Autumn Cicada. This group of blood guillotines numbered up to tens of thousands. Like a tornado sweeping the battlefield, everywhere they went, wolf packs howled and wailed. They flew left and right, entering the lightning wolves' bodies, and in a few breaths' time, the lightning wolves' blood would be completely absorbed. But this beast blood could not allow the blood guillotine to multiply. Only a goo master's origin blood that contains primeval essence could achieve this effect. One after another, lightning wolves were reduced to dry corpses, lying on the ground and losing their lives. Only the bold lightning wolves and frenzy lightning wolves' lightning currents could resist this blood guillotine. However, they could only electrocute a small number of flying insects, before an overwhelming number of blood guillotines would rush up and suck them into dry corpses. Howl! The steel web broke completely as the thunder crown wolf regained its freedom, howling in anger. The blood guillotine detected it, and it gathered quickly, forming a large red cloud and engulfing the thunder crown wolf completely. The thunder crown wolf's tail swung around as blue lightning currents shot out and turned hundreds and thousands of blood guillotines to crisps. The popping sound was just like firecrackers going off. A gust of wind blew, bringing along the horrible burnt smell of the roasted blood guillotines. The blood guillotine was indeed a rank 5 goo, but without a user, it could only attack head-on. The Thunder Crown Wolf had several rank 4 goo residing in it, and some had a wide area attack method, countering this blood guillotine. The flying insects moved like a red cloud as the Thunder Crown Wolf's hill-like body howled and struggled, creating a havoc. At this moment, the Thunder Crown Wolf's large body became its weakness as the fingertip-sized blood guillotine took advantage of it. The battle was intense. As large numbers of blood guillotines fell on the ground, the Thunder Crown Wolf's armor was broken through, and some blood guillotines drilled their way in and started to suck blood wantonly. Without any other choice, the Thunder Crown Wolf could only spray lightning plasma on its own body, electrocuting these blood guillotines. But this way, its surface muscles were all fried, emitting a fragrant cooked meat smell. The Wolf Tide's attack on the village had already stopped. Under the Thunder Crown Wolf's command, numerous lightning wolves attacked the insect group instead. The Goo Masters could be said to have escaped death, and many held their breaths as they watched this intense and tragic battle nervously. The insect group was like a death plague. Numerous lightning wolves would rush in and drop dead soon after. However, the lightning wolves' sacrifice also caused the insect group to face high expenditure. The blood guillotine dropped in numbers. The original dense cloud had turned into a thin fog, and soon it was reduced to a small tornado still flying in the air. The thunder crown wolf struggled and escaped, its mouth howling as it ran with all its speed. The blood in its body was almost half gone. Now its body felt soft and tired, while its running speed was not even 10% of the usual speed, and the lightning currents flowing on its body also became extremely scattered. As the leader of the wolf packs, the escape of the Thunder Crown Wolf caused the other Lightning Wolves' fighting spirit to diminish, and they also escaped all over the place. We finally did it. The Goo Masters seeing this became blank as some just collapsed on the ground, unwilling to get up. 
I'm actually still alive. Many Gu masters' expression was complicated. Some were filled with happiness while also in grief. Through the wolf tide, many clansmen were sacrificed. Buzz, buzz, buzz. The scattered blood guillotine group flew high into the sky, flying one huge round around the Gu Yu village before vanishing into the clouds. Seeing this, Fang Yuan's eyes shone with a complex thought. The defeat of the Thunder Crown Wolf meant the village was now safe. In fact, most of the wolf packs were dead or injured, so they no longer had such a huge number. This wolf tide could be said to have been over. However, wolf packs bear grudges, and as long as this myriad beast king is not dead, during the next wolf tide it would attack once again. After many years of recuperating, it would become even shrewder and stronger. In the current situation, it was at its weakest. Killing it now and getting the goo worms on its body can help replenish some of the clan's losses. Yao Zhong Jian, you two stay behind and take care of the situation. Other clan elders, follow me and assault the Thunder Crown Wolf, Gu Yubo hurriedly ordered, before leading the remaining seven elders capable of fighting out of the village and towards the direction that the Thunder Crown Wolf escaped in. Fang Yuan's gaze shone, weighing in his heart, although the clan's power is greatly reduced, the current situation is not in a mess. Moreover, this blood guillotine has a suspicious origin, I better follow the clan leader and check out the situation. Saying so, he went into stealth mode and went down the slope. The stealth scales goo and the Thunderwang's goo cannot be used concurrently. Thunderwang's goo was a rank 3 goo, and once activated it forms a pair of lightning wings that cannot be hidden by the rank 2 stealth scales goo. Against the rank 3 clan elders, the stealth scales Gu's hiding ability was not effective. Fang Yuan could only follow their tracks and keep a distance between them, not daring to get close. When the Thunder Crown Wolf attacked, he was still in the Rock Crack secret cave and did not participate in the battle. If he appeared now, it would attract the rage of the clan head and clan elder, and if they questioned him, he would have not been able to explain himself. The injuries of the Thunder Crown Wolf were very severe, so it could not move fast. After half an hour, Fang Yuan could hear that there was the sound of fighting and scolding ahead of him. He went there in stealth, getting onto a mountain rock, observing the Gu Master's fight. The Thunder Crown Wolf lay on the ground with many new injuries on its body. Blood was flowing non-stop as it was gasping for breath. Its dim eyes showed that it was very near death. Old geezer by, you and your guys sure have the face, coming here to take advantage of the situation. Hehe, <laughs> Gu Yu Bo, that's not the right thing to say. This thunder crown wolf was obviously stopped by us, get a clue and fuck off. Gu Yu Bo and the Bai clan leader were at a standstill, wary against each other. The wolf den had three thunder crown wolves, all myriad beast kings, each having their packs of tens of thousand lightning wolves but they did not glue together, and neither could they suppress one another. The wolf pack's movements relied on working together. The three Thunder Crown wolves had intelligence, each targeting the three large beast groups to hunt. In their eyes, humans were also wild beasts and even prey. In their understanding, the wolf tide was a massive hunting session. On King Mao Mountain, the Qing, Gu Yu, and Bai clan were able to live for hundreds of years. Naturally, they all had their trump cards. Chun clan was the weakest, still resisting the wolf tide with difficulty even now. The Bai clan had risen these years, and their cumulative strength had exceeded the Gu Yu clan. After killing a thunder crown wolf and pushing back the wolf tide, the Bai clan leader brought his clan elders to Gu Yu village, trying to find some opportunities. To think that there really was such a chance, Thus, they blocked the Thunder Crown Wolf in this valley. The Thunder Crown Wolf's body had many goo worms, and some were even rank 4. The Thunder Crown Wolf's blood, bone, eye, and fur were all precious refinement material. The Gu Yu clan naturally would not let go of them, and under intense anger, they attacked. Haha, <laughs> Fang Yuan, you really came. I've waited for so long. On the mountain wall, a cold laughter was heard. 
Fang Yuan raised his head, only to see a white-clothed young man descending from the sky as an ice blade slashed towards his face with resolution.